this is one of the classrooms that we've treated acoustically. It's a classroom that was built in 1958. Essentially, when it was constructed, it was a tin box. It was very reverberant, very echoey, not a particularly nice place to teach children. This room has been treated to the highest possible standard, which is the Batov standard, 0.4 of a second reverberation over a wide range of frequencies. The treatment that happened, that's happened in here is essentially the wall panels and the ceiling. The ceiling treatment consists of the main tiles with an extra base pad above. The pads overlap so that there are no gaps. And it provides a room, hopefully you can hear through the sound quality on this video, is exceptionally good. It's very good to teach in as a room. I don't need to re raise my voice to be heard. I don't ask the children to speak in any other voice than I'm speaking to you now. It works really well. You can experiment with group work. The sound is very directional. And the intrusion of sound, external sounds, is very limited. This is the second of our classrooms treated to the mid-range standard, which is approximately 0.4 of a second reverberation. This classroom is identical to the first and to the next one that we're going to see. It's been very important that we've chosen identical classrooms so you can truly compare the differences in performance between the different treatments that we've done. The treatment in this room is just a single pad, 15 millimetres thick, another class A absorber. This essentially is just the ceiling tiles. This room still performs very well as a teaching environment. It's much easier here to be directional with the sound. You can hear where the sound is coming from, from one corner of the room to the other corner of the room. The children at the back of the classroom who talk can clearly be understood, even though children in the ages of 11 to 16 have quite a variety of different voice styles. The teachers still quite like this room because there's a little bit of life in it and their voice can carry a little bit more effectively. It works well as a teaching space. This is the third of our rooms. I think you'll be able to sense the difference in the quality of the sound immediately. This room is treated to 0.8 of a second reverberation time as set out in BB93. It's considered to be acceptable for ordinary classrooms. The treatment here is essentially a standard ceiling tile. The quality of the sound here doesn't work very well for most teachers. As children talk or just move pencils, move bags, move whatever it is, the sound builds up and it very quickly becomes very difficult to distinguish the different sounds, the voices and the general activity of the classroom. This classroom is the same, identical to the other classrooms that you've seen already. Hopefully you'll notice that we are going down in standard. This is the fourth and final of our classrooms. This classroom has had no treatment whatsoever. It's the same as many classrooms up and down the United Kingdom. It's still presented quite well, with reasonable quality furniture, carpet on the floor, nice displays and fresh coat of paint. But still, I think you'll agree, if you listen to the sound quality, it's not very good at all. There's a lot of reverberation here. This was measured at over a second. The teachers that work in here don't like it. The classes, even when they're all on task, tend to be noisy. The movement of the chairs, the shuffling of pencil cases, create quite a distracting noise. Group work is very difficult here. And the children, even when they're trying to focus, do get very easily distracted. The teacher uses their voice a lot more. They need to project a lot more. And there have been more issues to do with voice care and sore throats from teachers working in this sort of environment. We're back in the room which has got the highest level of treatment again. The pupils have arrived now and hopefully you can really see the contrast between the other rooms that we've looked in. This is a much nicer environment to work in. Again, it's treated to the Batov standard, which is the 0.4 of a second reverberation 
over a wide range of frequencies. We've been working in classrooms, but we're not finished yet. This is one of our circulation areas. It's very noisy, not very inclusive for pupils with hearing impairment. So for us, the journey hasn't stopped. It's just partly begun.